Hi, everybody. It's Dana Stangle with Taranga Ranch. And today we are doing our kids series just for you. And we are in the middle of talking about the desert and things that happen there and animals that live there. And just as a quick review, um, we were not on last week and I feel like we also skipped the week before. That's super possible. Um, yeah, but we've been talking about the desert now for a few weeks. You notice I have my hat on because it's hot in the desert and the sun is really, really harsh. I have my sleeves on today because again, life in the desert is really harsh. You got to be ready. And of course, I'm wearing my all-time favorite cactus earrings. Notice they have the little bloom at the top because that's what cactuses do, right? So the first two stories that we covered were Cactus Hotel, super good one about how animals and life thrive around the saguaro when he's alive and when he's dead. It's an amazing hotel. And we also talked about this awesome book, Rattlesnake Dance, where we sort of went into depth about rattlers in our area. And so today we are doing this book, which is called Creatures of the Desert World. And this one is super interesting because it's actually very short. It's just a few pages long, but each page is full of detail and it's just incredible. I'm really excited to share this with you. So we're going to introduce the book. We're going to talk about the book. I'm going to share the book and we're going to talk about some concepts that come from the book, right? So which brings me to my printout of my vocabulary. I don't want to forget about the all important vocabulary, right? So anyway, here we go. This is the book. It's called Creatures of the Desert World. And I want you to see this guy on the front. He's super similar to the rabbit that you might see in your yard, but he's also maybe a little bit different. Here in the LA area, we are host to the cottontail, right? But in the desert, you can find the cottontail, but you're more likely to find the jackrabbit, right? He's the, the desert cousin, right? All right, you guys, I know you're like a pop-up book, but really, I am so serious. This is the world's most amazing pop-up book. I know, right? Right, okay, so first, Oh, who is that? What is happening there? That looks like a cactus wren on the move. We're going to talk about that guy in a minute. Here, we've got the cougar or the puma or the mountain lion, whatever you feel like calling him today. Over here, you've got, looks like bobcat kittens. No, those aren't bobcat kittens. Those have long tails, and so they must be the babies of the mountain lion mama. They just look like they've got some dark spots there. And then you've got cac cactus here and cactus here, and they're different kinds of cacti, right? This one is more of a barrel cactus. This one looks like a beaver tail. And in the back, it looks like I see a, a saguaro. And then I think there's, oh no, there's nothing there. But look at, oh, this guy. Oh, yes. Is he moving? I don't think he's moving, but you've got a burrowing, a burrowing owl in there. Yay! Okay, super cute. And basically, in the, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, this is what happens when you just look at the pictures first and you make assumptions, right? In the early morning sun, two mountain lion cubs are playing with a spiny lizard. Yeah. Oh, there's the spiny lizard right there. Do you think the spiny lizard is also playing? 
No, I don't think so either. I think the spiny lizard is hanging on for his life, right? I don't think if I were a spiny lizard, I would want to be played with by mountain lion kittens. Just me, just saying. Soon they will follow their mother to their den to sleep during the hottest part of the day. And that was something that I really wanted to talk about today because I think a lot of people get confused about reptiles and how much they want to be in the sun and desert life in general, right? Like we go ahead and we, um, oh gosh, I just got confused. Somebody's, somebody just sent me a message and, and I need to work on mirror because apparently this is backwards. Is this backwards to you guys? Anyway, um, hopefully it'll be okay mostly. And I was wrong. That's not a burrowing owl either. It's an elf owl. Oh my goodness, you guys. We all need to read books together all the time. This is a picture of the Arizona Sonoran Desert. And it's host to a lot of life. Um, oh, and back to what I was saying is that we, we look at the desert, right? And we think of these crazy situations where like, oh, nothing can live in the desert. It's so hot there. Is it like 110 degrees Fahrenheit? And the thing is, there's a lot of life in the desert. And reptiles and other animals that live in the desert are not necessarily always heat seeking. While they do like to get out in the sun and warm up, especially reptiles, because they have to get warm enough to, to digest their food, right? But most of these animals play it cool. And the hottest part of the day, most of them are going to be keeping cool somewhere. And in the desert, they're going to mainly be active at dawn and at dusk. Those are the for wildlife everywhere, but especially in the desert. And there's more nocturnal wildlife in the desert because of the extreme temperatures, right? All right. So this book is pretty cool because it also compares the saguaro to uh, an apartment building, right? The Cactus Hotel, the apartment building. Just know that where there are when there's a cactus, there's life, right? Because it's holding all that liquid, right? So, oh, and then over here, we did see a cactus wren, and we also saw a kestrel, it's a bird of prey. Okay, and then again down here, we've got a little elf owl, so cute. Okay. Now we're going to turn the page. Again, this book, Creatures of the Desert World, it's a National Geographic action book. doesn't have that many pages, but there's a lot going on on each page. So second page, check this out, you guys. And this has the badger digging which is interesting. So we're gonna spend a minute talking about badgers. I will keep this open so that you can appreciate how cool it is while I tell you about the coyote and the badger. So coyotes and badgers are interesting because the coyote loves rodents and so does the badger, but they have different ways of getting their food. Um, the coyote is a really fast runner and he can jump and he can dig. And the um, badger is a really good digger. And so you may have seen a video or a picture where these guys are sort of hanging out in the same area. And one thing that's interesting that scientists have seen these guys do is for one thing, they've seen them play together, which seems crazy. And for another thing, they've observed them hunting together. And so what happens is they find their prey, they hear it, or they smell it, they know it's there. And then if it tries to dig really fast to get out of the way of the coyote, the badger can outdig it. 
If it tries to run really fast to get away from the badger, the coyote cannot run it. So if these guys hunt together, they increase their chances of catching their prey. They up their percentage to about 50% because that rodent almost doesn't have a chance at all when two hunters are chasing him with two different tactics. So, um, and the average, the average wildlife hunter doesn't, doesn't get his prey most of the time. So this is a great way to increase your odds, right? So these two found a way to get along and to get their food together. Now, I'm not going to tell you that they share their food because I, they, they, we don't have studies that show that. But we do have observations showing coyote and badger hanging out, hunting, and playing together. So that's kind of cool. Then over here, we've got another interesting relationship. This is the rattler. In the LA area, he would be the, the Southern Pacific, but this one is not from the LA area. This is a roadrunner. A roadrunner? No, yeah, I think so. Anyway, can, let's see, what does it say? I have an idea. The roadrunner goes after a rattlesnake. Why, yes, because he can exhaust him and then have him for dinner. What, a bird eating a rattlesnake? Yes, rattlers, as we talked about last time, can be really fragile and not much will kill them. It's only their venom that they're depending on for survival. So um, sometimes this, this roadrunner can eat this rattlesnake for dinner. All right, and let's see what it says. So many animals hunt in the morning. That's what it says. And it says the road runner goes after a rattlesnake. The snake rattles his tail. Ready to strike, but the bird can dodge the snake's poisonous fangs. When the snake gets tired, the bird may kill it for food. What? Life in the desert. Nearby, a badger digs into the home of a ground squirrel. I think I know some neighbors who wish they had badgers in their backyard. The underground home or burrow has another opening, but even if the squirrel escapes the claws of the badger, it may become breakfast for a watchful coyote. Right? Just beautiful. There's just so much going on in these pictures. All right, next page. this look so awesome this is sort of a 3d look at a saguaro and it's pretty amazing it's late spring in the desert and flowers are blooming at noon time it's hot and many animals still stay in the shade. This way, they don't need as much water. A mule deer curls up near a cactus. A kit fox lies in the shade near her den. Peccaries, which are like pigs, bury themselves in the sand. Not all the animals are resting. Quail run through the bushes. We also have quail here in LA. A red racer slithers across the hot sand to the shelter of a rock. I just got a call about a red racer in somebody's backyard this week. And the snake would die if it stayed too long in the sun. Two hawks perch above their nest on the cactus. Right. So the cactus is really cool because he provides shade and food and a place for a variety of animals to live and liquid. So these are some amazing, amazing adaptations for survival. And it helps all of the other desert animals survive, which is really cool. 
All right, what is next? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Look at this. So I'm just sort of, we've got some action going on. Is that this page? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, look at that. Scurry, 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 scurry. Cactus blooms, right? So cool. We've got our jackrabbit. We've got our desert tortoise. When I move the page, look what the desert tortoise is doing. He is eating the cactus. Yum, yum. And um, ooh, down here, look who's hiding down here. That's pretty cool too, if you see that. Okay, in the afternoon heat, only a few animals are moving about. A pack rat runs home with a toy it found. Did you ever hear that about pack rats? How they like to steal shiny and bright things and put them in their homes? Yeah. I have a pack rat nest right outside my house. It's so amazing. And just like a couple of them live in there. They don't want to be in my house. I'll tell you that. They have, especially when they have all of these fun little goodies that they bring home that they find. A tortoise reaches for cactus fruit and startles a jackrabbit. Bing! You know what happens when you startle a jackrabbit, right? A black-throated sparrow hunts for seeds. Some animals escape the sun by staying underground. A scorpion will wait until night to hunt for insects to eat. With its cheek pouches full of seeds, a pocket mouse curls up in its burrow. A centipede has found a cool, damp spot. So, just an amazing, amazing pop-up book, right? I feel like this book just gives new meaning to pop-up books. All right. And then, oh, that one. It's sunset in the desert, right? Ooh, I know this is in California. You know how I know right away? Look at this guy. He is a Gila monster, and he does not live in California. As the sun sets, the desert cools off quickly. Night animals such as the tarantula begin to move around. A tarantula is a spider the size of a mouse. You remember, do you remember our tarantula friend from before? I brought him back. I'm gonna show him to you real quick before we finish this book. Because tarantulas are awesome. And do you know that if, if you were to have a tarantula, well, of course, they're not this big, right? If they were this big, that would be really scary. They're much smaller than this. This is just a fun little puppet. And you notice this puppet is super hairy, right? And so tarantulas have these little hairs on them. And if you pick one up and if he gets scared, He's not going to bite you. He's going to let loose some of his hairs that are going to irritate your skin. Right? That's his defense. And this abdomen is actually very fragile. If he falls, he will pop. That will be the end of him. So another animal that's very misunderstood and very fragile and a super, impar super important part of the ecosystem, right? So this guy may look scary, but he's a friend. And then you've got this guy. Can you hear that? He is also helpful to the ecosystem, also lives around here, also lives in the desert. This is your rattlesnake, right? but he's also got a job to do. He's eating rodents. He's keeping the rats and mice from running across our feet all day. So he doesn't wanna see you any more than you wanna see him. So always be aware of these guys and be careful when you're hiking, watch where you're putting your feet. That's the number one thing. You can avoid them very easily. 
And so what else? Let's get back. Let's get back to what we were doing. This is so awesome. Okay. The Gila monster turns his head to watch. What? <laughs> he doesn't want to turn his head back. Come on. Turn your head back, Gila monster. All right. Um, he uses his sense of smell to find eggs, birds, and small animals to eat. With, when food is scarce, the lizard lives on fat stored in his big tail. Do you know another lizard that does that? I do. The barefoot gecko lives in the California desert, and he also carries his electrolytes and yummies in his tail for days when he doesn't have a snack. Pretty cool adaptation for survival, if you ask me. A skunk does a handstand to warn a bobcat. Can you picture that? Have you ever seen that? Skunks are great at handstands. But let me tell you, I don't think you really want to see one do a handstand while you're standing there. Because that is a big warning. And it's about to come with a juicy surprise, right? If the bobcat does not leave, the skunk will spray a bad smell. Phew! A wren sings from the top of a cactus. The cactus wren, the cactus wren is actually a very special bird and there aren't that many of them left and they only build their nests in cactus. Pretty cool, huh? The nest is safe among the sharp cactus spines. So all these animals have lived together for a long time in the desert and they've adapted together. And so they have relationships that might depend on one another. It's pretty cool. Oh, you guys, it's nighttime in the desert. A full, a full moon lights up the desert night. Now that it's cooler, a lot of animals are out hunting. Many of them depend on sharp senses of hearing or smell to catch food. Bats use echoes to find their way. Long-nosed bats sip nectar from cactus flowers. Okay. Oh, look at this, we've got some. Look at the owl feeding us, baby, what? So cute. And then here, look at this. We've got flappy, flappy bat wings. So, so that is the story. So this week, I feel like we talked about some relationships that animals in the desert have together, how they relate, how they interrelate, how they share habitat and they share resources. It's really interesting, super cool. Um, yeah, oh, ha. And there was a picture of one in the book and we didn't spend too much time talking about it, but you know who else lives in the desert, right? You do, right? <laughs> That's who else lives in the desert, right? Our world famous, super fabulous, awesome, rockin' coyote lives in the desert. And he, as you remember, is a keystone species doing all kinds of stuff. So that's the story of Creatures in the Desert today. Um, and we are going to finish up our desert unit next week with 101 questions about desert life. Are we going to actually answer 101 questions? No, we are not. We are going to answer about 20 of these questions, but they're gonna be super fun and we are gonna have a great time. 
And I'm so excited about it. And then after that, I know, right? Does it possibly get better than that? Okay, hold on. I'm going down, going down, going down. Hey, come back up, come back up. Here I come. I know. I need, I need like somebody to hand me props or something. And I forget which order they're in because I don't have it handy. But we are going to be talking about raccoons. And we're going to be using the kissing hand to do it. And we are going to be talking about P22, the journey. And we might even have someone actually associated with the book join us for questions. What? I know. I know. It's so exciting. So no matter what you're doing this summer, thank you for joining us for our kids program. If, you would, if you're an adult or even if you're not an adult, we are going to be online on Thursday at 6 p.m. talking more about wildlife. I can't remember what this week's topic is, but it's all listed on either the newsletter that we send out or our um, Facebook page. So you can find it there. If you didn't subscribe yet on YouTube, please do. We need you. I want to take this show on the road, right? We need to... Uh, we need to be here. We need to know when we're going to be here doing this, right? So have your parents subscribe because that is what we're here to do. And um, yeah, that's it. So join us this summer. We're going to be here every Tuesday for this program at three. And if you missed any of the ones in the past, feel free to go to the YouTube channel. They are all there, all the subjects that we've talked about. So um, and again, I hope that you are having a good week. I hope that you are having good weather. I hope you're appreciating it. And um, I hope you're having an opportunity to get outside and see the wildlife that shares your community with you. It's really amazing. All right, everybody. Thank you again for joining me. And I can't wait to see you again really soon. And remember, when you're in the desert, you got to be prepared. All right? So be prepared. Bye, everybody.